Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hey guys, welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different today. I've only done this one other time for the podcast specifically. I am going back to a Patreon post that I did in May of 2022, so not too long ago, and kind of giving you a behind the scenes of the kind of content and information that you get when you join the Patreon family. Um, So as part of the Pet Parenting Reset family on Patreon, you can join for as little as a dollar a month and it just helps to continue, um, for me to be able to continue to bring content like this to you. So May of this year, I did this particular post. It's common misunderstandings about dog training. And so this is something that like, I just had kind of heavy on my heart at the time. Um, I, I don't do a ton of in-home dog training, but I do some. I do as much as I can fit into my schedule because I do have quite a few people contacting me um, regularly about you know getting on my schedule and coming in their home and doing dog training. And I absolutely love doing it, uh, but there are some things that people say to me, people that I see people say on social media that just had really been weighing heavy on my heart. So I did this post um, for my Patreon family. If you are part of the Patreon family, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure you read this at the time that I put it out and I hope that it uh, hits your heart in the same way when you listen to me read it today because it really was something that I just really felt strongly about putting this information into the world in a way that, um, you know, the way that it it comes, the way that it feels in my heart. So, you know, we can, we follow lots of different people, right, in in the world on social media, um, their blogs, their videos, and a lot of, a lot of what we follow when we follow people is their character and their personality and how they put things out um, and how, like, their spin on it and how they feel about things. And that's what draws us to different creators and kind of makes us not want to follow others. And so this is, was just kind of from my heart. Uh, so here we go. Common misunderstandings about dog training. As a dog trainer who uses positive reinforcement, I see and hear many comments, both on social media and in person, that people say about their dogs and about dog training that are simply false. While I am learning to express myself to become a better teacher, writing these posts for you helps me to gather my thoughts. So here are some of the top misconceptions, why they are false, and how to shift your thinking to help you and your dog. Number one, I need someone to train my dog for me. Oh Lord, how many times have people contacted me and asked me, how, like, do they just drop their dog off? How does this work? And then I see it on social media literally all the time. At first, I'm gonna be honest, at first it was like, it kind of angered me a little bit, but I think that's because I, I had to learn how to teach. I had to learn, and I'm still learning, how to communicate and interact with people um, and, and express myself and the thoughts that I have. So here's what I wrote. <laughs> While a good dog trainer can certainly provide positive training experiences to your dog, and your dog can learn behaviors and cues from a good dog trainer, the best trainers actually train the humans. It is important for pet parents to be able to understand their dog and communicate with their dog to get the best results and a good relationship. While dog training is about shaping the dog's behavior, it is much more about teaching the person and less about teaching the dog. 
Dogs understand what you want pretty quickly and easily. It's the humans that need the most help in understanding dog language and communicating in a positive manner to get desired results from their dog. So I hope that kind of clears up that misconception um, that you should, and, and this is, I, I know I have taught, I know I did a YouTube video probably a few years ago now about why you should never take your dog to a board and train for board and train facility. I've been recording all day, guys. This is just <laughs> where my where my mouth is is right now. Like words are not forming well. Board and train. I l never ever ever like look, I'm not saying that there aren't some good ones out there. I'm sure there are meaning that they do care for your pet and they take good care of them and they don't harm them and all the things. I've just heard way too many horror stories and here's the thing, I can't tell you how many people have contacted me and they're like, I sent my dog to you know this two week training but you know it's a year later and my dog is as bad as they've ever been. Well, that's because you didn't learn anything. That's because you didn't learn how to interact with your dog. You didn't learn how to ask your dog for what you want. And you didn't learn how to be patient while your dog is trying to understand you. Your dog hasn't learned what you want. They learned what somebody else wanted. And now they're in a totally different environment back at home with you. And they don't, it, it, it's, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So let's move on to the second uh, misconception. Here's number two. My dog will not listen. I can't tell, I feel like almost every single home I've ever been in, there are some exceptions, but almost every single home I've ever been in, the person has said this to me. My dog won't listen. Or my dog listens to him, but it won't listen to me. Or my dog listens to me, but won't listen to that. Like, okay, here's what I wrote. I've never once seen a case where this was true. What has always been true is that the pet parent hasn't figured out how to speak with their dog, how to read their dog's body language, and hasn't figured out their dog's reward hierarchy. Let me stop there for a second. One of the things that I give all of my in-home clients for their homework in the after the very first session we meet is to start mapping out their dog's reward, their value ladder for rewards. So lots of different foods, lots of different treats, um, lots of different toys. What toys do they like better than others? Um, playtime, affection, petting, uh, praise, vocalization in praise. All of these need to go on the ladder. Where do they fall? What does your dog like best? What do they respond to over other things? Where can, where, where's a baseline we can start, right? Maybe we can start with some boiled chicken and move up. There are things your dog likes even better than that. So yeah, we can get Oh, a desired response with a boiled chicken treat. But hey, there's a squirrel over there, so I need I need more value that I can have in my back pocket to, to work with when I need it, right? So we need to figure out this value ladder for our dog. Um, okay, so let's get back. Our dogs have varying interest in toys, play, affection, and foods. Even within each of these categories, they will have different things they like better than others. For example, my dog likes turkey giblets, beef heart, salmon skins, etc. but her favorite treat is a chicken heart. Even better, some pieces of leftover steak, usually ribeye or filet, are sure to get her mouth watering. Learning what your dog likes and the degree to which your dog likes them will help you train and ultimately get the behaviors you want from your dog. Now I do have a little side story here because since I wrote this post for uh, the Patreon fam, I have found a reward that my dog actually likes better than chicken hearts. So this like value hierarchy, this reward value ladder that you are figuring out for your dog, it isn't static, right? 
it changes over time and it should. And so we need to adjust with our dog over time. We need to be evaluating different things with our dog over time. So we recently tried a new treat box. It's called Forever Love Club and I am not affiliated with them. Uh, they do not sponsor anything. I just, I bought this box on my own because I liked a lot about it. And in the first box, we got beef tongue, uh, dehydrated beef tongue. So, oh my goodness, Kim goes bizarre. She loves beef tongue, we have found out, um, even over and above her beloved chicken hearts. So now I have something even above a chicken heart that I can give her, that I can use um, if I need to, to gain her attention, I can you if, if we're in a situation where she's having a difficult time um, moving forward, then we can, we have something even better than chicken hearts we can use now. So this is not something that we, you know, it's not a once and done, we figured it out, we can move on. Well, yes, we figured it out and now we can move on, but what we have figured out can change over time. So that's important to know as well. Okay, here's the third thing on the list of common misconceptions. Number three, my dog is doing, insert behavior here, to get back at me. So for instance, my dog is chewing on my shoe to get back at me. Humans want payback. We seek revenge. We want to treat others in a manner that reflects our feelings in the moment, but not dogs. When we attribute human emotions and behaviors to animals, it's called anthropomorphizing. It's easy to do, and society seems to deem it to, to be a, not only okay, but normal. The fact that your dog does not do anything to get back at you, even if it feels that way to you. Your feelings are based on your experiences, not your dog's. The fact is that every behavior your dog makes is indeed to relay a message to you, but we need to look at their perspective. If you take your dog out to potty and come back inside for your dog to pee in the house, instead of assuming your dog is doing something spiteful, realize that any number of things could be going on. At the top of the list is a possible urinary tract infection. This is just one example of many, but the point remains. Look at things from the perspective of your dog and not your own experiences and feelings. Seek out help from a professional, especially if there is a possibility of medical need. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what more to say about that. It's, it's just, it's unfair to our dogs to take our emotions and feelings and, and attribute that to them because you might want to be spiteful in a situation or maybe you're feeling guilty about leaving them alone for so long and you're thinking, oh, well, for sure they're gonna be mad at me. That's your guilt that's coming through, not what they're feeling. So just, you know, be, be aware that there, there's a lot more to think about. Step outside of yourself for a moment and really try to see things from your dog's perspective. Okay, number four on our list. I took my dog to obedience school. They should know better. We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier with that board and train um, comment that I, that, that I had earlier. I kind of went a little off. I don't like board and train, but anyway, um, that is that's my opinion and I have expressed my opinion and why it is my opinion and you can take that or leave it. But, um, okay, so number four is I took my dog to obedi obedience school, they should know better. While I appreciate very much that you've taken the time to set your dog or puppy up on the right path for success and hopefully you went with them to learn, you and your dog will grow and continue to learn throughout your dog's life. Your dog will find new and fun things to do. They may even go through a phase where they try many things to see how much they can do and where the lines are drawn. This is all normal. It is your job to continue to reward the positive behaviors, to shape the behaviors you want to see in your dog 
throughout their lifetime. It's like your job. You keep doing your job every day because you receive a paycheck. If you were to stop receiving that paycheck, you'd stop working. It's the same for your dog. While you will be able to reward less frequently, you should always reward your dog for the behaviors you want to continue to see throughout their life. There is no such thing as one and done when it comes to your dog. Look at it this way. You are creating and building a relationship with your dog. You will both grow and change throughout the time you have together. Make sure you are staying connected to your dog to continue the bond that you share. Okay, number five on my list of common misconceptions about dog training. My dog is too set in their ways. It is what it is at this point. I have definitely heard this one before and I wonder if you've said it. You're gonna have to reach out to me on social and let me know. So here's what I wrote. Of course, we'd all love for every dog to learn proper manners as a puppy, but older dogs can learn new tricks, or cues as I like to call them. If you've ever heard someone say anything like this, he'll always pull on the leash. I've tried to teach him using what I learned in his dog training class, but it's just not working for me now that he's so big and strong. Or, I know she weighs too much, but I've put her on low calorie dog food and it hasn't helped. I also can't stop her from begging at the table and my kids and visitors can't resist her eyes. She's going to be obese forever. Or maybe he's probably just learned to pee indoors when he lived in a kennel at the animal shelter. I'm just going to have to put up with the accidents in the house. That's just part of adopting a rescue dog. The best option for these dogs is for their pet parent, that's you, to take the responsibility to learn more and do more to help their dog. Your dog doesn't want to be uncomfortable or cause anxiety to you any more than you want to have anxiety. It is your responsibility to help your dog through these behaviors and create a home you are both comfortable and happy to live in. So, I hope these explanations were helpful and I hope that you can enjoy your dog in a new way now that you understand them better. I'm curious if you have heard any statements like these um, about dogs that stand out to you, you're going to have to let me know because these were just some of the top ones that I came up with that day that were really like hitting my heart. <laughs> um, they were really heavy on my heart because so many people just you know it's work and they don't want to put in the work and that's unfortunate like they want the dog but they don't want to put in the work for the dog and um it's really unfortunate and i think it's it's more of a societal problem that we have but that's probably a topic for another day so i hope that these common misconceptions have been cleared up for you if you've ever said them if you've ever heard them if people are in, in your life are saying them to you um, now you have a really good understanding of why they are simply not true and hopefully can have educated conversations to help others uh, learn the same that they're just simply not true and um, it was it was really cathartic for me to write all of that out for our patreon family and um, kind of really cathartic even for me to read it here for you today so i hope you enjoyed it i hope that this podcast was helpful if you haven't already joined the patreon family i hope you do so as i was saying in the beginning you can join for as little as a dollar a month you get new content exclusive content content like this that normally does not go live anywhere else but to our patreon family um, sometimes i'll just do impromptu videos <laughs> and they are you know exclusive for our patreon family and it's really a thank you to you because it it's a lot to put this kind of content out for the world and um, we just need a little bit of support and the patreon family helps me um, with that support so i do hope you check it out um, you can go to the petparentingreset.com and right there in the top navigation menu it'll say patreon you can click right there to get a link to go and join um, and when you do you'll get all of the back content as well so it's really cool uh, it's it's the best value on the internet, I bet. <laughs> so with that, I hope you guys give your pets some extra love from me this week. 
Um, until next week, I, I, yeah, y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll be talking to you then. Bye, guys. Oh, oh.